Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Good afternoon. It's May 24th, 2018. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama, guest hosting for Reg Baker, who show, the, it is his, actually, uh, Business in Hawaii. And I'm continuing his series, really promoting great entrepreneurs in the state, trying to really grow business using all kinds of tools. And today we have Ricky Zeng, who is the president of ZR Systems in the business category called IT. And Ricky, welcome to the show. Hi, Ray. Thank you very much for having me here. Appreciate the uh, time on air. All right, and so, uh, Ricky, you, you're, you're like an entrepreneur. You started out like by yourself, and then now you've grown the company ZR Systems to like 20, 21 employees mm -hmm. over 12 years, uh, mm -hmm. from 2006 uh, six to now, 2018. Mm -hmm. But where were, you, where were you raised? Where were you, uh, how, and, and your education background? How mm -hmm. did you, uh, l l tell me some of the steps for the, our audience, how you got here. Okay. Uh, well, my family and I, we immigrated here from China when I was three. Uh, grew up pretty much in the Honolulu area. Um, McKinley Tigers, class of 97. <laughs> okay. uh, from there, went to UH from undergrad. Um, went to California for a bit to study tech. Uh, decided to come back for my grad degree at UH at night. <laughs> and did you ever um, uh, feel as a, as a child or later in college that you wanted to start your own business? You know, people always told me when I was young, I always had an enterprising mind yeah. because I was like, always trying to figure things out. But I think it was, you know, half innovation, half just being lazy and trying to figure out how to cut corners. And I guess that's, you know, the key to being an entrepreneur. But you did work <laughs> in other jobs before starting your company. Yes, yes. My first job um, was actually at a major local restaurant chain right. when I was 15. Uh, where I started from humble beginnings uh, as utility, aka <laughs> janitorial services. Uh, since then, you know, I've told myself uh, that's kind of not where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, how did you get into uh, starting your uh, business? And and tell me uh, first off for the audience, and uh, they want to know uh, what is your product and who's your customer. Okay. Um, I guess we can start off with how my business started. Okay. Um, so at the time I was working at the university, um, I was about to graduate. Um, I already had some side jobs here and there helping other people out. Um, and when I graduated, I decided, you know what I want to do? I want to quit my job. Of course, most people like my parents weren't totally excited. We just spent eight years in school. Um, but from there, it just from the network I built from previous projects, I started getting phone calls, and it just kind of all started from there. So uh, you have an MIS background, right, uh, that you mm -hmm. studied at, uh, at the uh, UH. So you mm -hmm. were interested in computers anyway, right, right. from way back. Right. And uh, did you play around with games or uh, computers with your family mm -hmm. back when you were a child? Mm -hmm. uh, that was your start in all this? Mm -hmm. So my brother, uh, he's six years older than me. Um, Back when I was about six or seven, that's when IBM clones came out. Um, it was the next big thing. Um, I thought it was pretty cool to play video games. So when he wasn't around, I kind of tampered with his computer, ended up breaking the floppy disk. <laughs> um, from there, it was like, I got to fix this. Yeah. And when I got it working, it was like, wow, this is pretty cool stuff. Yeah. So that kind of started me in the whole troubleshooting phase. Right, right. Uh, but then growing up, um, bulletin boards, you were familiar with those. Right, were right, way, way back, yeah, yeah. So you would call with a dial-up modem. Right. Um, that was the beginning, I think. Right. And then when I started making friends with older people, the uh, university started offering free internet service. Right. When I got a hold of a dial-up account and I got on the internet, it was like, wow, look yeah. at these things I could do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, kind of, uh, you know, way of getting into the business. But, mm -hmm. uh, but you, you really started out just excited about putting things together and, and so forth, troubleshooting, you know, mm -hmm. computers and, and bulletin boards. I used to work with AOL, in fact, uh, the early, uh, how to, um, uh, internet, uh, how to get people together, you know, communities, you know, bulletin boards and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then when you quit your job and started your own company, your own job, mm -hmm. what did you do? So I helped a lot of businesses, a lot smaller ones in the beginning, um, put in new systems, just like a server or application. 
And at the time, it was just fun for me. So I never thought about the business side. It was, it was pretty much, hey, pay me what you thought was right. And you know, it, it got me pretty far, but eventually you get to the point where, hey, I want to have two hands. So it wasn't until a few years into where you got to really figure out what's my business model and how do I expand from here. So you started out like a more of a hobby, helping your friends, right? I mean, troubleshooting right. and, and kind of fixing their computers and so forth. And so how many years uh, passed before you hired your first employee or got people together? Mm -hmm. I'd say about three years into it, I hired my first employee. Um, that was a game changer. That's when you realize that it's not about managing technology anymore. It's about growing people and managing people. And that in itself it's a, was a whole new learning experience for and me. You have to meet payroll. <laughs> uh, that month. too, right. right. Uh, so, and so many of your, um, uh, 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 your accounts or companies, your customers in the beginning, mm -hmm. are they different from what they are today? Well, I can tell you most of the people I started off with, um, a lot of them are actually still our clients Ooh. today. Um, so it's been exciting watching them grow. And yeah. the ones that aren't, you know, we still talk and help each other out. You know, Hawaii is only a small community. Um, but I guess your question about helping them grow, um, yeah, I mean, our business model has always been learn the business and become a partner with you and grow with you. And so far, I think we've been doing pretty good in that. Now, aspect. let's let's go back to what you just spoke of. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking before on sitting down with a customer. You know, even before they become a customer, you're, you're mm -hmm. really communicating and having a conversation about their business. Right. right. And to understand their business. Uh, why is this so important? Mm -hmm. Well, Ray, we're not the best fit for everybody and they might not be the best fit for us. So for me, it's very important that we sit down, get to know each other, learn about your business, and see how IT can help you. Um, it could be that we're a good match, but maybe you're not ready yet. So the more we talk, the more we engage before we start. I think it's a good way to setting the, set, the expectations and making sure that we're successful at the, in the long run. So when you, uh, at, at, uh, when you have these conversations mm -hmm. uh, and you're learning about the company, mm -hmm. does it matter if the company is in hospitality or retail or restaurants or other IT? Does it matter at all or uh, you have a niche or, uh, that you would like to focus on? So when I first started, um, when I was working at the UH, a lot of the work we did was with the healthcare industry. Um, so I started helping some doctors and from there we kind of just grew and we became almost an 80% healthcare shop. But to answer your question, no, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you use IT, if you even touch technology, then we can probably find a way to help you out. And when you say IT and technology, uh, mm -hmm. in healthcare, mm -hmm. uh, which is different than retail or restaurants, mm -hmm. but there are applications that uh, kind of uh, organize their business, their um, records, or uh, organize their um, uh, accounts receivables and so forth. So what you're offering, is it uh, only the software side of the applications, or do you uh, help them out in ordering the, the uh, hardware configuration? Mm -hmm. Good question. So a lot of IT shops, or people that claim to be IT shops, basically they repair or they sell you equipment. What we try to do is, we try to look at IT as a tool to help uh, improve your business. So unless I understand your business, I won't be able to help you. I'll just be selling you things that you may not need. So uh, once again, it's very important that we sit down and discuss and really understand what we're trying to do here. Now, it doesn't matter if a company is huge or uh, very tiny. What is your uh, sweet spot of a company that really can leverage what you uh, have to offer and, and to uh, really get uh, IT as a tool to help them? Or is there a like uh, you know ten to twenty million or under ten million? Or what, what is or uh, number of employees? Is there any kind of uh, uh, you know profile that you say, oh wow, you're the right profile for my company? Right, right. That's a, a very tough question to answer because in the past we tried to see which would be the best fit, but what I've noticed from my experience is it's not really how big you are; it's your reliance on IT and how much we can help you with that. Mm. So, I mean, there's a lot of small companies that totally rely on IT. We can make a big impact. Mm. There might be a big company, you know, right. you might have average employees, right. but maybe you never use a computer. Oh, In that right. respect, you know, there's only so much we can do for you. So it depends, uh, like you said before, uh, that you go in and really talk to them about mm -hmm. are they using IT at all? <laughs> or, or did they think of using IT? Uh, and, and, but what is their uh, you know, uh, standard operating processes or procedures, mm -hmm. and if it's so old and old-fashioned, maybe they can't use IT. <laughs> right, right. 
Uh, now, in your uh, work, and you've been dealing with uh, many, many uh, customers now, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me of a story that you can uh, tell me, Ray, this is a case story that mm -hmm. I, I, I want to talk about. You don't have to say the name, but uh, yeah. that was very successful, uh, uh, that you see uh, it was a win-win. Ooh, okay. Where should I start from here? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I would say let's, let's, let's talk about the small businesses. Okay. I think Hawaii was built on the backbone of small businesses. Of course, yes. Um, we stepped into an organization where they weren't exactly getting the service they got from their provider, um, antiquated equipment, um, had a lot of weird ways of doing things. <laughs> like a simple print job took a many clicks. Right. And typical Hawaii, you know? People don't like the grumble complain, they like their IT guy, and everything was fine and dandy. Um, but what I really saw was they weren't able to do their function. Mm. You know, I mean, things weren't getting done on time. Their, their data business, wasn't, their, their daily yeah, business, their business, right? Okay, it right. wasn't efficient. It wasn't efficient, okay. right? Um, and there was a lot of holes where things could go wrong. Mm. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't until something actually went wrong until they contacted us. And then when we came in there, we basically took a look at everything they did, and said, "Hey, you know." You're, a lot of things you're doing right now, we can fix by simply changing something here or tweaking something. Yeah. Or a lot of times it's removing IT. Oh, you know? interesting. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. technology is an interesting thing. You know, when it's helpful, it's helpful. Yeah. Other times it's just there to be cool. But it's an obstacle to really being efficient. That's what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Right. Now, now, when you went in, uh, like you say, uh, how do do you have a um, when you say Hawaii organizations, uh, some uh, kinds of um, uh, I would say, uh, uh, worst case kind of things that Hawaii people or CEOs or CTOs should be doing and they're not uh, overall. Right. Uh, are there anything that you see in the future that, mm -hmm. that it really is something that uh, you say, wow, if more companies are using it, it could really transform their business. What is that? Well, I mean, right now the, the buzz term in industry is cloud and cloud in itself is a very mystifying concept. Um, but I like it because I think it really gets people to start thinking about the future and what, what can it do. And the, and the wording is cloud computing, right? Cloud the, the, computing. The, the, the total term. Correct. And, and I've heard about it a lot, and I think many of the big companies, is, is, is that only just for big companies, I, I would think? Mm -hmm. Well, cloud's actually evolved quite a bit uh, these days um, from a single user to a large company. I think anyone can leverage the cloud. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say the cloud, what are two or three advantages that uh, for organization to move into a cloud computing model for their uh, organization? Mm -hmm. What are they? Okay, maybe um, let me kind of talk a bit about cloud. So, yeah. just to clarify a bit, because I think there's a lot of definitions okay. depending who you talk to. Um, when I hear cloud, and a lot of people they just think cloud means an application on the web. Right. 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 Um, but it actually means a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. um, but to simplify things, in a gist, a cloud means you're running your services and your servers in somebody else's data center. Let them take care of it. Right. Right. Now, we're going to come back to that and, okay. and think about, let's think about this some more because I think this is a innovation that will impact everybody in the future and right. I think you're on the leading edge of this. Mm -hmm. This is Think Tech uh, Business in Hawaii and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, your host on ThinkTech's Likeable Science Show. Every Friday at 2 p.m., we delve in the magical, magical, fascinating world of science. How science applies to your life, why you should care about science, what impact science has on you and on those around you, why you need to know some science. It's a fun, interesting, painless way to learn some good science that you can use. See you there. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of New Japanese Language Show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. <laughs> Good afternoon, and we're back talking about cloud computing. And uh, as Ricky Zeng, the president of ZR Systems, has been talking about, 
there's a lot of misconceptions, uh, various notions and terminology flung about about cloud computing. But I think business really has to focus in what does cloud computing mean for their organization and how can it bring benefits in security, flexibility, accessibility for multiple devices. And this is where we're going to begin our second half with Ricky, who is our expert in how to leverage IT, but at the same time really bring productivity to small to medium-sized businesses throughout the state of Hawaii. Ricky, we were just talking about uh, how, what, uh, you, you're talking about cloud computing, trying to define it in a way that really makes sense for the uh, CEO or CTO of a small to medium-sized business in Hawaii. What are they? Okay, so to recap and simplify this whole cloud concept, right, it basically means let somebody else run the back end um, and let us just run the applications. Um, that in itself, it's depending on who you talk to, mm. it's a really good thing or it's a really bad thing because you have no idea what's running on the background. Right, right. So instead of drilling down all different uh, cloud options, let's talk about the benefits. Okay. Right. Um, as you mentioned, the three benefits. Uh, first one is flexibility. Second one is accessibility. And the third one is security. Um, so accessibility. Actually, let me go back to yeah. flexibility. What does right. that mean, right? Yeah. So cloud, in my mind, means you should be able to scale up or scale down whenever you need to, mm. right? So you're a CPA firm, right? Uh, tax season, I want to hire three people, right. scale up your compute power, oh, good, bring yeah, in some yeah. PCs, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. When they're done, scale back down. Right, instead of buying everything, you're stuck with it for, for years, right, right? Right, exactly, exactly. And along with flexibility means that you should be able to pay according to what you consume, mm. right? Um, second one is accessibility. Uh, meaning that you should be able to access it from anywhere. Wow. Right? And so, this means mobile or ta mobile tablet device. or laptop or PC, right? Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Oh, wow. And the, the internet and speed increases and everything really made this possible. Mm. So I think that's why a lot of times people think cloud, they just think it's an online app. Right. But it actually goes beyond just mm. that, right? So your cloud could be your email services, could be your web, could be your applications. Oh, wow. Um, but some people, when they talk about security, don't want their data to be, mm -hmm. uh, to be in somebody else's hands. Right. Uh, um, how do you kind of uh, deal with that uh, perception? Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned in the beginning, right, running cloud means having someone else manage the back end. Right. So it's a, lot, it's a big scary thing for a lot of people. Right? You don't know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So number one, you always want to find a reputable vendor. Um, that's why there's public and private clouds. Um, also, with the cloud, you got to make sure that you secure not just your cloud apps, but also your endpoints, hmm. right? Things that were benefits before could now be weaknesses, right? right? The fact that you're accessible from any device anywhere right. in the world right. means you got to make sure you know yep. who's on your system. So you, you not only um, have to think about uh, security, you have to th think about security in a broader sense, right? Mm -hmm. About the multiple devices also. Right. But at the same time, you get out of that, you know, uh, that you, you're not going to be worrying every day about the things in your shop. <laughs> there's, there's somebody else managing that for you. Am right. I correct? Correct, correct, yeah. yeah. So I think a lot of companies out there, especially IT companies, they might feel threatened by the cloud. Right. Because they think my customer is going to go cloud, they won't need me anymore. Right. How, what am I going to do? I see it as the opposite, hmm. right? Now that we can forget about the infrastructure, right. let's help the customer manage their endpoints, their applications, their hmm. workflows. How do we make their business better with cloud? Well, so they can uh, really uh, focus on what makes a business productive or Correct. more efficient. And they can really take a look at, uh, is IT really helping them <laughs> right, uh, right. do what they can do uh, much more efficiently? I, I, and I think that's a, uh, that's a key point because when I worked for MIT, one of the great mysteries in a great study during the 90s was that why with so much IT coming into organizations, mm -hmm. productivity did not rise. Right. And one of the reasons why was that managerial kind of reporting and organization had to change mm -hmm. in order to use or, or leverage IT. And, and I think you're correct that uh, they have to do a really a great bigger audit of how they use IT, mm -hmm. and then that will sharpen everybody's skills. Right, right. So what I always tell people is, when you want water, you turn the tap, you get water, you're good to go. You don't care about the plumbing, you don't care about the infrastructure. <laughs> right, right. Oh, yeah. So with IT, why do you want to be concerned with everything in between? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's not your job, right. right? Let us help you figure out what kind of water you want, when the, the right. temperature, right. you know, which rooms you want it in. Yeah. 
Well, oh, that's very efficient. Now, uh, now, you talk to a lot of IT managers, CTOs. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what the three mistakes that people that you encounter mm -hmm. really should not be making or should, should not be, should be avoiding uh, when you talk mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first one would be the tendency to either over plan or under plan. Um, when I say over plan, I mean, okay, you have a five year plan. In IT, that's 50 years. <laughs> okay. Right? So at some right, point, right, right. if something doesn't make <laughs> yeah, sense, yeah. you switch gears, right? Right, right. On the opposite side, yeah. there's the under planning. Yeah. I want to have a budget. Yeah. There's only so much I can do. I'm going right. to wait. Right. Well, you can't do that either, right? right? You got to right. keep staying right. on the foreground what's coming out right. next. Um, the second one would be focus on the business. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, IT is there for the business. If you don't focus on the business, you're nothing but overhead. Right. Right. And the last one is, uh, and it's a very important one, is get buy-in. And where do you get, who's the buy-in? Where do you get that? Buy-in from employees, right. from team members, from shareholders, from customers, everybody, right? Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times the CTO may be the smartest guy or think he's the smartest guy yeah. in the company, and he says, this is what we got to do. Yeah. But if the guys don't buy into it, it's they'll never use it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I, I have been in many organizations where they introduce the latest and greatest in Salesforce or mm -hmm. all kinds of uh, productivity tools. Nobody used it. And, mm -hmm. and you're correct that um, uh, IT has to be um, uh, launched with everybody's buy-in. And you're absolutely right. Why? Why? Why is it uh, coming in? Because it will add to my bottom line, kind of thing, uh, mm -hmm. for each employee. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, now you're you know going back. To to the beginning of the show where we were talking mm -hmm. about your entrepreneurial vision and so forth. Mm -hmm. Where do you want the company to go uh, in, in three to five years? Uh, wh mm -hmm. What's your vision? You have 20, 21 people now, mm -hmm. and, and I can see you're, you're very innovative, you're, you're, um, uh, you're scaling up. Where do, where do you see yourself and the company? Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, if you notice you know, the story of me raising up, I always ended up back in Hawaii one way or another. So I would really like to see a company that could deliver an IT service, an actual product, right. out of Hawaii. So right, for me, right. that's that's yeah. a big thing. Um, and you mean going to the mainland with the product or globally, right? right. Exactly, yeah. wow. exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, I would love a building, and it could be a real building or it could be a virtual building, where we had people from all different specialties um, getting deep in things that people need for business. Um, I feel like in Hawaii, we outsource a lot of things. Mm. IT doesn't need to be one of those things. Right. right? Right. Now, do you have a philosophy? Do you, mm -hmm. do you, when you're uh, uh, scaling up, when you're, uh, like you say, one of the things that you encountered when you mm -hmm. hired your first employee, you had to manage them. <laughs> you had right. to mentor them. You had to right. really uh, you know, get them going in the right direction and do the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, for yourself, uh, what, what, what have you uh, kind of um, uh, brought into yourself, into your mind, that has helped you along? Mm -hmm. I mean, growing up and just doing business, you run into a lot of different mentors that give you different pieces of advice. One day, a guy told me, Ricky, there's only so much you can do with a pair of hands. And that's when I realized that's absolutely true. Oh, that's good, <laughs> right? yeah. So how do I expand my reach, right? right? right. Um, thing number one is you have to be a good coach. Right. Um, you gotta be able to take people. You don't have to be the smartest, but you need to find a way to make those guys smarter and better than you. Because the better yeah. they get, the less you have to work, right? right. Uh, so you have to get over that ego part. Um, second one is you always have to listen. Listen and learn, right? And listening and learning comes from the most unexpected areas. Mm. It could be the new employee, it could be the old timer, it could be another entrepreneur, but always listen. Mm. I think there's always something to be learned from every piece of advice, good and bad. Right. Uh, have you sought any professional uh, consulting and coaching in your, uh, in your, uh, in your business? Mm -hmm. So I've been always receptive to different types of uh, coaching and um, mentors. So going through my business, I was part of a Vistage group, which is a peer group of CEOs. I felt that was very helpful. Um, I also work with Guild Growth Partners. They've been able to kind of mentor me and kind of help me see things that I don't quite see in my hindsight. You know, a lot of times you're in the daily grind and when people stop and talk to you and tell you things, it's nothing new. All they're doing is reframing in a way that you go, oh, that's right, I forgot about that, and kind of set you back, right? <laughs> right. 
Right. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you feel that uh, a company like Guild with seasoned professionals are pointing the future uh, for you mm -hmm. uh, based on a lot of uh, things that uh, worked in the past, I guess. And, and, and you're absolutely right. I think for uh, many uh, CEOs uh, in Hawaii uh, mm -hmm. of SMEs, mm -hmm. uh, they need to know uh, larger ideas or innovations that may be somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. and the solution may exist elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, we are in a small market of 1.2 million people, right. and we're just talking to each other <laughs> sometimes, right. and we don't see the larger uh, possible uh, product lines or services or solutions to their, uh, to their mm -hmm. issues that they have in their organizations. Right. I think that's, that's a very clear uh, kind of area for a lot more Hawaii uh, CEOs to get into, which is um, uh, growing their companies with consultants uh, like Guild. Mm -hmm. Now, finally, we're going to um, uh, focus on, uh, we see changes in the future in IT. Aside from cloud, uh, well, what, what would you say that if cloud, what would make cloud much more receptive or what are the things you have to do in talking to people that will make people uh, believe in it and start talking about it? What would those factors be? Mm -hmm. I think education is always the first one. Um, uh, there's, there's no one single solution that's going to fix everything. Cloud is just one piece, right? All your traditional IT is still going to stick around. You still have to practice good business uh, practices. All of that needs to be taken into consideration as one whole piece. Um, so don't worry, it's not just cloud, it's everything. And we all need to realize that, right? So uh, cloud is one of the tools that one you have tools. in your quiver here to, that you can bring out uh, right, with right. people. But, uh, but going back is, is uh, this continuous conversations. That's the mm -hmm. key to, to uh, kind of uh, making you aware of what is the best fit you know, of IT to, a, to an organization. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you ask questions to uh, CEOs or CTOs and others in organizations, um, sometimes you get a feeling that uh, you're, you're uh, uh, moving ahead with some people uh, faster than others. Mm -hmm. What makes people uh, say, Ricky, you've uh, really you know, uh, shined a light on, on a problem, a dark problem that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, what are things that you bring that mm -hmm. uh, make people aware of those things? Mm -hmm. I think the first step is always to try and understand what the problems are um, before you start fixing them. A lot of times you jump in, you fix a problem, and you find out that wasn't really a problem. Right, um, so they teach you in school. Ask the customer what the pain points are. Yeah. Um, but you know, you ask the customer, they're not going to know. If they knew, they wouldn't need you, right? <laughs> okay. So part right. of the discovery really is let's just have a conversation, let's yeah. talk to each other, and yeah. let's figure out together what the yeah. pain points are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in, in, in Hawaii business, though, you've, you've talked to a wide range of businesses. Mm -hmm. Are there any uh, threads or similarities that you see in, in IT um, uh, usage or um, IT applications in uh, many organizations? Mm -hmm. What are they? I think there is a misconception that IT is a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. If I want to fund IT, where am I taking it from? Right. Well, the fact is you don't really have to. If it's done properly, you can make things better, lower costing, faster, whatever the case is, as long as you do it properly. And yeah. that's fundamentally the change, uh, I guess, in, in mentality of people. Mm -hmm. If they get that, mm -hmm. then things got smoother in conversations with you? Right, right. <laughs> so it, it is going, getting over that fear. You know, once you, you embrace it, it's easy, and it blends right into the rest of your business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and talking about Hawaii, uh, you have some, uh, like you mentioned before, a, a way to grow and possibly you know, move up uh, and, and expand elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, where, where does that come within you? A lot of people see Hawaii and that's all they see. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that in your past that made you want to do that or, or any, anything that you read or saw models of people that you say, wow, I want to be like them? Any, any, mm -hmm. any, well, so growing up in Hawaii, it's a small community. When you go out to school in the mainland, you're thinking, wow, a big IT, Silicon Valley, right? So as, as you meet more people, you meet more businesses, you realize that people are people. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing special about it. You know, Hawaii is a little more laid back, but we're totally capable. So once you understand that, I mean, sky's the limit, I feel. 
Well, we're going to close on that, uh, Ricky. Uh, what a great conversation we had, mm -hmm. uh, very fast clipped. Mm -hmm. And I think many CEOs and, and CTOs and IT managers mm -hmm. will look at this conversation and say, wow, there's a, there's a lot to digest. And, and, but I think what you say will really help their business mm -hmm. and using uh, IT tools. But mm -hmm. again, it's the, it's the conversation and how they do their business is right. the key. Thank you, Ricky. Right. Thank you. Okay. okay. <laughs> And this is the end of Business in Hawaii with Reza Chiyama and Ricky Zhang. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah, that's fine. Fantastic.